This video will hurt. The amount of aggravation I got from trying to do this seemingly simple task of putting together a custom water cooling loop was immense. It was 99.9% .9 due to the hose that I ordered being inexplicably out of spec, even though it came from a reputable manufacturer, in my case XSPC. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's start with unboxing the various components. Even though in my case it didn't quite go 100% to plan, this is still very much a worthwhile little project for anyone who wants to move away from a AIOs and into custom cooling. We start as it is fitting with the well, fittings, taking them all out of the packaging and laying them on my little part tray. For whatever reason, I have chosen 11.1mm inner to 16mm outer diameter tubing or 7 16 to 5 8 if that makes more sense to you. And I suspect this is where I went a bit wrong with this oddball dimension. I chose them knowing full well they wouldn't really provide any benefit because the quite literally bottleneck is unavoidable due to the quarter inch standard fittings. Next, it's time to take the EK Quantum Kinetic Pump out of its packaging. Fancy name aside, this is a D5PWM pump that is SATA powered instead of Molex. That's it, EK only does the pump housing and LED, which I'm surely going to use when I repurpose this several years down the line into a PC I will sell on. The nice thing about these pumps is that they do tend to last for ages if properly taken care of. We are talking A plus years here easily, something no non-modular AIO can ever hope to achieve as of yet. For the water block, I again opted for EK, this time their latest quantum velocity squared. Some of the marketing claims might be a bit iffy in my view, but overall it's a very well engineered piece of cooling equipment. I just hope that EK will stick to their already provided hints that they will make this compatible with AM5 so I don't have to purchase the exact same block with a different mount if I want to upgrade. My first attempt at putting all of this together involved two fractal design 360mm radiators. Little did I know that both of them have micro pores. I have used probably hundreds of radiators by this point and literally never had an issue until these two. What I suspect happened is that when I cleaned their insides with salt and vinegar, the gunk that was plugging the pores came off and a leak sprang up. If you're looking at what I'm doing and scratching your head, remember I'm not going to install this into a standard chassis, rather my adapted IKEA TV stand until I moved the PC altogether under the stairs and out of sight completely. The reason I felt I needed two 360mm radiators is because the 5950X can actually saturate one 360 60mm slim radiator in certain circumstances like having the fan set to silent and the second being that, that in the future I might very well look at hooking up a GPU to this setup. Considering that the 1490 is rumored to use up to 660 watts I think I might need to expand this setup a bit. But for now the two stack radiators will do just fine. Once I tried to install the tube onto the fittings it became clear that the tube wall thickness varied. My best guess is that the extrusion machine was not properly set up at the manufacturer with the end result being that I had to deal with a very wonky tube. I needed both a hot air gun and sandpaper to get it into shape so it could be installed in the fittings. And that's not to mention the pliers that I had to use to tighten everything out. I should point out that this is really not normal and you really do not need this much force to tighten the ring. Once everything was put together, the only thing remaining was to fill it full of Mayhem's Echo X1 Clear Premix and hope for the best. I always test AIOs and custom water loops for at least a day before I turn on the PC, that way if there is any leak, no matter how small, it will show up before it has a chance to short circuit everything. As I mentioned, each radiator unfortunately had very small leaks and it took a couple of hours to notice anything, but regardless, they had to be replaced. Even before looking at the new radiators, I bought some EK tubing 
being because I could not be asked to subject myself to the XSPC stuff once again. With that out of the way, what I end up using are these fairly inexpensive copper well, brass magical radiators that are very similar to the outgoing fractal design ones. I thought long and hard about the kind of radiators I want to use. I was very tempted to use cross flow ones, but in the end I decided to go with the standard 360mm rads. I might decide to swap them all later as components are all getting more power hungry, but for now just cooling one CPU they are adequate. There are some out there that insist that the radiator must be 100% copper, but having used alpha cool pure copper radiators before, I can safely say that paying double for a copper radiator compared to a brass one is ridiculous. Also, there is no need to waste the 3 day old Mayhem's fluid, so I tried to collect as much of it as I could in a recycled fluid bottle. This I will filter later and use for various AIOs when doing servicing. From here it will be the same procedure with the new radiators, I will connect them using the roofing bracket. I know it sounds seeded but hey it works and they were relatively inexpensive saving me a ton of time from fabricating brackets. Just removing the tube from the fitting feels really impossible. I had to risk it and use my cutter to get it out. Once I used the EK tube that had the correct thickness, it was a breeze. Just slip it onto the bob and tighten the ring. Simple as that. Took all of one minute to join them together properly. No sandpaper and no heater required. Unfortunately though, I do have a complaint about the EK tubing as well. It was supposed to be with the X1 clear premix, but for some reason after a couple of days it started discoloring and it took on this greenish hue. For my setup it doesn't really matter at all but I know that is generally not the case. A little while later after more sandpapering of the XSPC tube and the whole thing is back together. All I have to do now is fill it back up, turn it on and hope for the best. Thankfully this time the very next day there were no leaks to be found at all and I could install it into my computer. Most people won't do this outside the PC, they will dimension everything to fit snugly inside their case, but since I don't have one, well, I just eyeball the lengths to make sure the components sit roughly in the right locations and I can easily install my new custom pseudo AIO. Initially I wanted to do some temperature testing, but decided to defer it until I get rid of my TV stand and move the PC into the closet where it will be a lot more challenging for the cooling system. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.